This is the good, the bad, and the ugly of having Tesla solar and power walls for four years. So in 2020, I got them installed. Between 2020 and 2022, clear sailing. Late 2022, Hurricane Ian hit, which was later discovered to be a Category 5 hurricane. Absolutely destroyed my area. My Tesla solar and power walls saved the day. We had no grid power for eight days. My power walls did amazing. I want to emphasize, when I lost grid power from the hurricane, the Tesla solar and power walls power the air condition, the stove, the hot water, the refrigerator, everything. While my neighbors are sweating, while the refrigerators are off and they're losing all of their food, while they're stinky and not able to take a shower, I was able to do everything. Watch TV, enjoy all the lights on in the house. Also, I was able to charge my Tesla so I could evacuate rising floodwaters. That experience alone was worth the cost of the whole system. There was a little bit of a problem because I had a leak in the roof from a tree branch hitting it. I freaked out, turned the breaker off to the whole house. Because we had power from the Tesla solar and power walls, I was worried we were going to have like an electrical fire or something. So I just freaked, turned the breaker off. The next day, when I assess the damage, see it's not that bad, I realize I can't even turn the power walls back on. Because when you turn the breaker off, the power walls have like a special 12-volt battery that's utilized to turn them on and off. That 12-volt battery is dead. I had to jump the power walls. <laughs> it was a crazy experience, but I got them back working. I learned if you have any problems at all, do not turn the main breaker off because the power walls will not be able to be turned back on until the grid comes back on. And I did not want that to happen, so I kind of like did a hack and jumped them. <laughs> also, I want to point out that I had a solar panel damaged from the hurricane. It looked bad, but guess what? My solar production actually went up after the hurricane because the solar panels got cleaned so well. And that crack on that one panel had no effect on my system at all. About four months later, though, Tesla did fix it. It was a perfectly great experience. Nothing bad happened there. Four months is a long time to some people, but keep in mind, we had a catastrophic hurricane that affected a lot of people in the area. Four months, I didn't even have my roof fixed. Now let's fast forward to 2023. I have my first issue with the power walls that's not like storm related. At some point, the power walls just stopped charging. I don't know what happened. So I put in a ticket with Tesla. It took about a month or two, I believe, and they came out and they fixed it. Under warranty, no cost to me. It was a little bit of an inconvenience because the power walls weren't working, but the solar panel still did, so it didn't really affect me at all. They still sold power back to the grid. Now it's 2024. An interesting thing is, in 2023, my solar panels produced more solar energy than ever. So if you think solar panels slowly produce less and less over the years, that's not the case with me. I'm on year four and they're still doing great. And if you're wondering about the price for my entire system, it was about $40,000. I have a 10 year loan on these. So in six more years, they'll be paid off. I'll have free electricity. I'll have backup power. So I have peace of mind if another hurricane comes. They've been great. People think Tesla service is subpar. They fixed my solar panel. No problem. That wasn't their fault. And they fixed their power wall, which was their fault, but it's all taken care of. I highly recommend Tesla solar and power walls to anybody that can afford them and has their own house, especially people in Florida that are prone to hurricanes and a lot of power outages.